May 12, 1998 is uh, reconvened at 7.30 p.m. We met earlier at 5.30 and went into executive session to um, discuss a student matter. Sub subsequently came out of that meeting and um, um, went into a finance subcommittee meeting at 6.30. And we are now entering again uh, regular session at 7.30. First order of business is a Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Um, adjustments to the agenda, there are two under committee reports, item C will be a continuous improvement on time committee report. And under new business will be item G, a community services appointment. I have some. I need to change uh, the item D number of uh, teachers moving from part time to full time from two to four. And I need to change item F, teacher resignations from two to four items. And I also would like to request that uh, Beth be added to the agenda at this point to make some comments. Thank you. I think I'll go up to the podium, Charlie, if you'd come up and join me. <laughs> I'm just going to take this moment to uh, say thank you because it has been a pleasure. Um, it has been a journey, as I said the other night at the town council meeting. And I, I fe really feel honored that you, that you have honored me. And I was thinking, how could I go back and look at what I, what I, look forward to in coming on the board, and I didn't come onto the board with any kind of agenda. So I actually went back to a handout I gave out the first year I ran nine years ago. And it said, I support a strong curriculum, challenging all students, 
appreciating and attracting motivated school staff, responsibly administrating tax dollars, vigil vigilantly maintaining buildings, grounds, and services. And I, and I look back at the last nine years, and I think we've made strides in, in all of those aspirations I had for our system. And in some areas, we've made some leaps and bounds. I feel leaving that we really are on the right track. We have facilities that are in top shape. We have a plan to keep them there. We have made great strides in our, in our computer technology, integrating it into the classroom. And I, I hearken back to probably about six years ago, and the, the one and only time I really had a temper tantrum at a, board, at a, a budget meeting, and that was how we were spending our, our computer technology money. And I, and I commend the schools, I commend the board, I commend the administration for getting on track and really coming up fast, not quite as fast as the science program, but coming up fast with a program and a plan. I really have to thank all the board members who I've served with over the last nine years. And all I have to do is, is to watch some of our surrounding communities when they have televised meetings to know how fortunate we have been in this town and are in this town of having people who are really here for our children, for our community, and whether we have our differences or not, in the, in the end, we are usually 100% behind our actions and, and what we plan to do. And, and that has been a joy. And I'm going to miss all the people, but I'm not gonna miss the time. <laughs> and I thank you again. <laughs> Uh, we are going to move on to approval of the minutes of the April school board meeting of April 7th, 1998. And there's one that was a special meeting and a regular school board meeting on the same day. No changes? The minutes stand. Um, we now move on to comments by our high school representatives.
much. Like, they've done a great job this year. And, um, we really appreciate their services. And we presented a barbecue that we had outside that they organized. Um, last week was our final FTC meeting at SACC, as we know it. And after the elections, um, we're going to have another one next week combining the, the newly elected members with this year's members. Um, right now, the, the heel points came out, came out today, and all the sports teams are doing very well. Um, musicals coming along pretty well. There's, I believe there's three more weeks left um, of rehearsal for that, and they're going to have three performances at the end of this month. Uh, it's guys and dolls. Guys and dolls. Um, at our final SAC meeting, we discussed um, how well we've done this year. We're meeting our three goals. First of all, with the uh, communication with the school board, um, our service project, and also the student. Um, student involvement in activities which we think have done, done very well throughout the year in sporting events and activities. Um, we'd like to thank everyone on the school board for their um, cooperation and their um, being there to help us out with our um, various um, problems. And we'd also like to give a special thanks to Mr. Sweeney for coming to our meetings and being sort of the liaison between the school board and the SAC. Um, that's about it. Thank you. Any questions? I just wanted to say thank you for our visits, and I hope that next year um, our newest board member will be asked to spend a day at the high school, too, because I think that's really valuable. Matt, first of all, I'd like to thank the entire SAC for allowing me to visit with you folks. Uh, some of the most enjoyable time I spent this year. And I also want to congratulate the entire SAC and the student body for meeting your goals. You really did a tremendous job, and your new SAC is going to have a tough time filling your shoes. But I'm sure they do that, and I hope I get the opportunity to visit with them as well. Thanks. I want to thank you, Matt, and Ryan, also for your year of service. Um, I think it's been a very productive and fruitful one and I think has opened up communications between the school board and the students. And, and I thank you for your efforts. And our middle school representatives. Guess what day today is. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Chelsea Burr. And I'm Sarah Nelson. Uh, yesterday, the band and chorus went, went to Pete's Island, and we played our concert for the kindergarten through fifth grade kids there. It went really well, and I thought it was really fun. And we have a band concert on May 20th at the high school gym. This week is Spirit Week. Yesterday was color day, and each grade was assigned a color to wear. Today was twin day. The rest of the days this week include clash day, and career day, and flashback day. There will be a fifth to sixth grade social this Friday at the high school, from 7 to 9. And this week, eighth grade is holding their freshman elections for SAC next year. Next week, the sixth grade will be going to Chwanki. The civil rights team is preparing for an awareness presentation to all the grade levels. Any questions? Again, since this is my last meeting, I want to thank both you, Sarah and Chelsea, for, for being elected and representing your school and doing it well. And I also thank you for following the high school's um, and uh, inviting board members in for a day of visitation. I think it, it makes us human to them and not just a policy board, and I thank you for that. Uh, we move on to communications. I'll go ahead. I was just going to report on the meeting in Gorham of the sort of Cumberland County area school boards that started as a calendar um, sort of committee. And Charlie went to the first meeting. George and I and Cynthia, oh, sorry, Charlie and Cynthia went to the first meeting. And Cynthia, George, and I went to the last meeting. It looks like we'll meet again in September. 
The focus doesn't seem to be completely looking at a calendar issue, though, in vacations. It seems to be evolving into maybe looking at different ways we use time, um, other school board issues, just sort of different forum for different school boards to talk about topics. And we'll see what happens. A, a group is going to meet to plan the next meeting, and Cynthia's part of that, and um, we'll proceed. But it doesn't look like there are going to be any real calendar change recommendations, I don't think, very quickly. Any others? Um, I would also like to to thank, to congratulate Marie on her reelection, and to welcome my replacement uh, in in June. And uh, this, this is Desena. And congratulations. Um, it, it'll be Beth that'll have to fill my shoes. So, as the as the senior historian, so. <laughs> um, I also would like to update. Uh, on a communication that I relayed in, at our March meeting about uh, a perceived board uh, conflict of interest, and I'm going to read a statement. Um, the unders undersigned six members of the Cape Elizabeth School Board have met in executive sessions to discuss the matter described as follows. John Ridge, a duly elected school board member for the town of Cape Elizabeth, is married to Ann Ridge, a former employee of the Cape Elizabeth School System, who is engaged in an action against the Cape Elizabeth School Board regarding her employment in the system. In response to the concern generated by the situation, and given the lack of specification in the current language of the law governing conflict of interest on part of school board members in the state of Maine, the undersigned members agreed to formally seek an opinion from the state's attorney general's office as to whether or not this unusual and specific situation might be interpreted or be qualified as a conflict of interest on the part of Mr. Ridge. The public was appraised of the action of the board in seeking this opinion. At that time, George Entwistle communicated his dissatisfaction with the limited information provided to the townspeople regarding this matter. In response to Mr. Entwistle's recommendation that the board meet again in an executive session, a meeting was convened at which time the board reviewed and discussed appropriate action to be taken. It was decided and agreed by all six members present, absent Mr. Ridge, that the board would present this public statement. Subsequently, an opinion was received from the state's commissioner of education. And I'm going to read that letter. Dear Superintendent Mould, thank you for your letter of March 13, 1998, in which you requested advice on a potential conflict of interest in the school board. I apologize for the delay in any response. The question that you pose and the facts given do not appear to present a conflict of interest under 20-A AMRSA 1002. None, nonetheless, the circumstances described may create a conflict of interest under the common law, in essence, court-made law. Because the question you pose does not raise a question under Title 20-A, I respectfully decline to offer an opinion. Rather, I believe the question should be posed to the school's attorney. Sincerely, J. Duke, Albany's Commissioner of Education. The board has not yet had a full opportunity to consider the commissioner's response, nor further action, if any, to be taken by the board. At this juncture, however, the undersigned do wish to go on record and inform the public that the situation as described involving board member Ridge is at the very least awkward and considered by all to some extent to place an additional burden on the board as it attempts to con conduct business in a matter which best serves the town. And the undersigned are um, Beth Courier, Charles Greer, Kevin Sweeney, um, Keith Witherall, George Antwistle, and Marie Prager. We now move on to the superintendent's report. And the first is the teacher transfer at the middle school right. in 98-99. Right. Cheryl Higgins, who has currently been a seventh and eighth grade teacher at the middle school, will be transferring to grade five for the next school year. And also yesterday it was determined that Sandra Burley, who has been a special education teacher at Pond Cove, will be moving along to the middle school because of the movement of the special education population. So she will be a middle school special education teacher for 1998-99. And a report on the Special Olympics? 
um, in the high school report, there was a mention of the recent Special Olympics. We also had Winter Special Olympics a while back, and we, didn't, we failed to recognize the fact that at the state meet that our uh, students came in third overall, and I did want to commend Kathy Van Dorn, who is one of our special education staff members, for her leadership in that event. Okay, we move on to principal's reports, and I will not limit the amount of time you spend. <laughs> Don't tell them that. <laughs> right. <laughs> I would like to add my commendation to give one special note of uh, thanks regarding the Special Olympics. Uh, Skip Crosby, who is uh, a teacher at the high school that also coordinates our volu student volunteer uh, program, uh, took on the coordination of the uh, hugely successful Special Olympics, and I would like to thank him for that. He enrolled uh, the whole track team uh, in the effort. Special education staff obviously was uh, tremendous assistance, and many other students uh, volunteered to be involved in uh, the misfiring of the sprinkler system on the, uh, on the main field, notwithstanding it was still a, a, a tremendous uh, event. And I'd like to thank everybody involved uh, for that success. I'd like to start off with uh, a few invitations. As, as you know, this is an uh, extremely uh, busy time. Uh, Matt alluded to several of the events that are coming up, but I would like to, uh, in particular, invite you, and I'll try to do these in order so you can mark your calendar. Um, <clears throat> not a high school event, but an event that is made possible by the school department for the total community is uh, next Wednesday, May 20th, uh, Portland Spring Quartet free concert at the Spurling Church. Uh, as many of you know, we have, a, through a grant, uh, the um, involvement of the Portland String Quartet with our U.S. history classes. And they have uh, performed three times for us thus far, and will be performing their fourth and final concert for the juniors uh, in U.S. history tomorrow. Uh, in those concerts, they have talked to the students, talked to the students about the history of the music, uh, tied it into their American history class. It's a great experience for everybody involved. But as part of that grant, they also, we had a, a choice of a uh, final event. They could either provide a, a small workshop for the players, the string players, or we could provide a concert for the community uh, free of charge. And we chose this latter option as a way of uh, giving back to the community uh, some of what we've experienced. So Wednesday, May 20th at 6 o'clock in the evening, uh, for approximately an hour and 15 minutes will be the uh, will be the free concert by the Golden String Quartet. We'll be playing uh, two string quartets, one by Ives, one by Dvorak, and a uh, rag by uh, Scott Job. Uh, that's, I think if, if the weather cooperates with the beautiful evening of music at the, at the Spurling Church. The reason for the early start and early finish is the events at the Spurling Church have to finish by sundown. I wasn't aware of that uh, before, so I'm arranging the concert. We kept that in mind. The musical, as Matt mentioned, is uh, Thursday the 28th, Friday the 29th, and Sunday the 31st. That's the matinee performance. Uh, guys and dolls, uh, if any of you would uh, like to attend and would like to get uh, tickets in advance, please let me know. Uh, and I'll make those available. I'm looking forward to my first cables of the music. Uh, June 4th. 7 p.m. Spring Concert. We'll be featuring in both choral and instrumental music programs, both of which uh, are outstanding, I believe, uh, and well worth the visit. So again, I invite you to attend those. We've been working on uh, some fine-tuning of, of the end of the year, the traditional end of the year events. Uh, and uh, in, in, in response to many concerns about the way some of those events have been going in the past few years. Uh, some of those events include what, what was the Evening of Excellence, but what, which is going to be uh, a daytime awards assembly and senior farewell that will take place during the school day, uh, the next to the last day is on June 11th. Uh, 
uh, it will be an opportunity for students to recognize one another, to, to see each other being recognized, and also to bid farewell to a strong senior class. Um, the senior banquet will be later that evening. Uh, that will be similar to what it has been in the past, but they, the seniors have decided to eschew the uh, traditional uh, full banquet in order to spend more time in the uh, actual uh, celebration and recognition of the class uh, rather than spending all the time eating and then having just a little bit of time to try to recognize uh, uh, one another and celebrate the accomplishments of the class. So it will be a, a less formal meal. Um, it, uh, that also, the seniors have invited the uh, faculty to attend. Uh, in the past, they have not been able to do that because of the cost involved, but they, uh, with uh, this format, they have invited as many faculty as possible to attend at their at the seniors' uh, expense. Graduation, of course, on Friday, the 2nd at two, uh, the 12th at 2 o'clock, uh, is uh, and will follow a, a familiar uh, format uh, with minor alterations. The uh, seniors this year are preparing the month of the uh, No Snow Day year, uh, and so they are feeling very cheap. <laughs> they basically, are going to school just about the same length of time that the underclassmen are. Their exams start one day earlier than the uh, underclassmen. Uh, and uh, uh, that's the buck of the draw. I keep telling them that they're, they're better off for those extra days spent. They haven't bought it so far. Uh, finally, uh, and this goes hand in hand, I think, with uh, uh, some of the combinations that you passed on to the SAC. Uh, as Matt has already reported, the SAC has done an outstanding job of, uh, of reaching many of its goals. One that I think uh, has been uh, overlooked uh, in, in our minds, in, in the faculty's mind, and in mine twice, uh, a big part of student involvement is not just the traditional student involvement in uh, activities or extra, the extracurriculars, or the traditional definitions of school spirit. Uh, it has to do with having input uh, into the various processes. And this year's SAC, I think, has been exemplary in this regard. Uh, in three or four, four really different uh, major issues, they have lent uh, their input, their assistance, their hard work and time uh, to produce, I think, uh, improved results. A good example of that was when they came to the faculty and then came to the board to present their thoughts on the eligibility policy. Another example was when they came to the faculty and to me to present their thoughts on what seems to be a smaller and, and uh, uh, less important uh, policy, uh, but nonetheless, uh, it was good practice, and that was the policy on using Walkman in the, uh, in the school. But finally, uh, their latest foray into uh, this kind of endeavor involved uh, students from the student council coming to the faculty after having done a, a lot of work to present their idea for having student input into uh, the, their course evaluations, not faculty evaluations, but to give feedback to their teachers uh, through surveys, questionnaires uh, at the end of the year. They came to the department heads, did an excellent job. I, I was absent from that meeting, but uh, Dwight and several of the department heads have mentioned to me what an outstanding job they did of presenting that idea. We now, as a, as a full faculty, have discussed the surveys and those will be taking place at the end of this year um, in much the, uh, the uh, manner of, uh, that many of you are familiar with from college uh, uh, evaluations at the end of the year where uh, anonymous surveys will be filled out, put in an envelope uh, for the teacher. The teacher will be the one receiving that information uh, and taking the, the, uh, uh, the pros and cons from it. Process. Uh, by the way, the people who presented uh, the uh, proposal to the department heads uh, were all freshmen, members of the SAC, uh, which goes very well uh, for the future of leadership, uh, student leadership at the school. I think that this year's SAC has done an outstanding job of discussing important issues and then bringing those views to the faculty or to the board. And I hope that they learned uh, a good deal in the process, but I know we've learned We will also, of course, be sending out, as all schools will, uh, 
these surveys to the parents at the end. We have opted to stay with the same format that was used last year because it did tend to meet uh, the needs for the most part from talking to parents of the high school. I think it was in the other divisions that it was uh, questionable as to whether that particular format was the uh, right one to use. We will stick with that same format, but uh, hope for a much stronger response. The, the only uh, problem that we had as a school with the uh, survey was the very small response that we were trying to send a cover letter that encourages uh, the best possible response and hope that uh, we get much more input from our parent community. Uh, that's it. Where is graduation? We're, we're hoping for Fort Williams with, uh, with school being the backup of weather uh, is... Uh, okay. I didn't know if it was that's planned. Always a, that, that, I think it's always dreaded. I'm hoping for a day with, you know, it's, it's either the worst storm of the century or uh, a day like today. It's, right. Uh, it's no problems. Again, Peter, I'd like to thank you. I think your year here has been fruitful. Has, I think you've shown leadership in, on many fronts, and, and what little time I've worked with you, I've appreciated it, and I'm sure the board will continue. And we thank you for coming to Cape. I've enjoyed this year immensely. We'll continue to enjoy it immensely, and, and look forward to next year. I would like to thank the board also for an approach that I think has been uh, exemplary in terms of uh, stepping back when, uh, when it needed to be and to, to allow us to work, and on the other hand, taking leadership Thank you. And also, I would like to thank Dwight. Uh, he was an exceptional teacher. I know it was a career change for him, and now he's gone into administration, which is another career change for him. Again, thank you, Dwight. I know I can speak for Dwight saying he's enjoyed everything. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Beth. Peter, I just wanted to say I'm thrilled about the um, student evaluations. It's something that quickly came up at the middle school, and I'm so glad the students brought it up to do that for their courses. I think it's a real great thing, and maybe you can share examples down to the middle school and see if we can get that more uniform, too. That would be the, great. One of the interesting things that they did is they tailor-made uh, each questionnaire uh, so that it's department-specific. Some of the questions are common mm -hmm. for all departments, and then others are, are made uh, with well, I'm sure it was a lot of work, and it's, as long as we don't have to keep reinventing work, we should use it. So that's great. I'm thrilled that's happening. And next is Pond Cove.
<laughs> Again, Tom, I would like to thank you for your three years that you've been here and to thank Nancy, who I've worked with longer on, since I've been on the board, for your leadership and uh, focusing your staff and on, on essentially new direction, and I thank you. And finally, the middle school. I knew I'd be next. <laughs> <laughs> That was the intent. <laughs> They're actually quite unique. We've never seen anything like that. So it's always good to have a leader show us new things. So. <laughs> One of the things when I mentioned, um, if you had anything to share, Suzanne Janelle as the team leader for our world language team. We are learning that we're going to be changing from foreign languages to world languages. So I'm practicing language and knowledge. Um, but in recently, I think in the month of March, we had a group of students who took the National Spanish exam and another group of students who took the National French exam. And in the National Spanish exam, our eighth grade students, it's a small group of students, they're selected by the teachers, they have to meet certain requirements in order to take the exam. These are students who have taken Spanish for two years, their flex language, flex language when they were in the elementary school was um, French, and then they switched in their seventh grade year. And the following students placed um, this way in the state, across the state. Kevin Beeling placed sixth, Melissa Kirstead placed seventh, Allison Sheely placed ninth, and Abby Stevens placed tenth in the state, so they did very well. We had another group of students who participated in the National French exam, and this is an exam given to students in grades eight through 12, and the following results. Amanda Ann placed first in Maine on the level 1A exam. Aaron Sheets and Andy Price tied for third place in Maine. Karen Stanyeskin, Daniel Geyer, Josh Saper, and Kristen Pickham tied for fourth place in Maine. Rachel Nelsack <coughs> placed fifth in the state. Brittany Wiggins and Stephanie Reed tied for sixth place in Maine. Diana Price, Rilla Erickson tied for seventh. Beth Pear and John Miley tied for eighth. Annie Unholt, Lindsay Montel, Brian Harlow tied for 10th, and Michael O'Shea placed 10th in the state. Furthermore, Amanda Ann will be receiving a national award for placing 8th in the United States on the level 1A exam. She was in the 90th percentile. And the World Language Team wanted to pass on their congratulations to all of the students for being very well. So, we're proud of them. The next thing, um, an update on our outdoor experience and where we are. As Chelsea and Sarah shared with you, the sixth grade does go to Chihuahua next week. They will be departing at 845, or approximately 845 on Monday, and we'll look for their return at around 1.30 on Friday. The cost for Chihuahua this year, um, the original cost was $185 per camper. Through their work and fundraising, um, the contribution for each family was $40. So the class did a very good job uh, going out there and working to bring the contribution required from each family down. The last week of May, the fifth grade team is going to begin to try some of the things that they hope to work into next year's program for their outdoor experience. And if you remember, theirs does not take them away from school overnight. They use some of the local areas. And what they're going to be doing um, this time, they'll be going in their teaching team. So two classes will go at a time. They're going to go to two lights for about two hours and a half. 
and they're going to work in some of their science curriculum with one of the units from the Voss Science Program and Environment and do some things with the flora in the Two Lights area. They're going to do a scavenger hunt. They're going to use some math activities, um, finding the height of a tree by using triangulation. They're going to do the girth of a tree and find the age from that. And also do the surface area of the table. table. And the only one of those I can really explain to you is how to do the surface area of the table. table. So, just don't ask any technical questions here. <laughs> they're also going to try a few um, group challenge games to get ready. <laughs> Additionally, they are beginning to work with a young man from the high school, Matt Sprague. In his capacity, he's working to earn his Eagle Scout badge. He's going to be working with them to develop an orienteering course. And he's meeting with the team leader, I believe, on Thursday to discuss that. So thank you, Mr. Sweeney, for sending them our way. Um, that felt like something the team could really do. Next year for Chihuahua, our tentative date um, is the similar week in May, May 17th to the 21st. Um, the price will be $190 per camper, and the group has already started working on the Also, Camp PM, which is our new addition for the seventh grade, um, we are booked for November 30th through December 4th. We remind families that Camp PM is not a uh, tenting camping experience. They stay in cottages, they have hot and cold running water, heat. So going at that time of year is not going to be a problem um, for them. Um, that cost for that will be $145. Already we started with a bulk sale for um, fundraising. Let's see. Um, sometimes when it gets to be the end of the year, we have programs that overlap. And we get into that area. You know, we do have the band and chorus concerts for fifth and sixth grade tomorrow night at the high school. And we invite all of you to come. Then our next one is May 20, which is also the same time as the spring or the spring Right, ours, ours is at 7, so we, there's a slight overlap, so you can listen to them and then come on down and listen to the 7th and 8th grade bands and courses as they do their presentations. Both of those will be at the high school. And we certainly invite you to attend any of those. Hopefully you've got invitations in the mail uh, for a short time ago, I believe, they would have arrived. The, Last dance and last socials will both be held on June 5th. And the social is for fifth and sixth grade students. It's held at the high school. It goes from seven to nine. The dance is for seventh and eighth grade students. At the middle school, it goes from seven to 11. And please, if anyone asks you, the only special thing about it is that it's the last dance. It does not require a date. It does not require a formal gown. It does not require dinner out before or after. And it does not require that you arrive by limousine. It's just the final dance. So we welcome everyone to come. The Parents Association, by the way, is helping us put those on. So the students usually organize those events and so that they can be the total guests those nights that the parents take over and work with the teachers and then it's to organize those events. Really cool. Our parental input forms, uh, feedback forms, will go out May 22nd. We're doing something a little bit different this year <coughs> in that in the fall, we asked all of the parents as part of our, our New England Legal Middle Schools review to fill out a survey for us, which really hit upon a lot of the general atmosphere of the school and general program. And so the form that we send out is going to be open-ended, but it is going to um, invite parents to share their thoughts about the strengths and concerns they have for any of the program children this past year, and people will ask, be asked to respond in each subject area, and then those responses will be shared directly with the teachers, so that they can have them. It won't be as easy to report on the checklist, but we think it will get us to a point of where we would like to have some quality feedback um, to the teachers. In another year, we could combine both of those efforts, but since we just did the other one in the fall, we don't want to duplicate that effort this time. So that's what we would like to do. Now, um, other dates that we have coming up, we do have an orient orientation, yes. <coughs> I'll welcome you, forget it. We're going to welcome the new fifth grade students to the middle school. On uh, June 8th, we will be sending a notice on the Tom's um, weekly update that he sends, and it will be repeated in the next several weeks, so parents have that. We'll start at 7 p.m. for cafeteria. It only lasts about an hour. The major event of that night is that the incoming fifth graders get to meet with their teaching team for next year. They get to see who that person is, what they look like, and what they sound like. We have found over the years that that helps relieve some of the summer anxiety. They will also get a common supply list of things that they need to come to school with 
in September. We will be having our curriculum nights very early in September. June 8th is not a curriculum night, but those will occur very early in September. Eighth grade recognition, we'd like to invite all of you to the Parents Association gives this on to recognize our entire eighth grade class together. It is not an individual awards meeting, it is something to recognize all of them. And that is on June 10th, it's in the cafetorium, and it begins at 7 p.m. To let you know of some recent hiring that we did at the middle school, we have hired Kate Tebow to replace Sally Tamaro as the guidance secretary. Kate will begin working with us in August when the middle school office opens up again, and it's tentatively set for August 17th. Sally Tamaro will be moving to the main office to replace Arlene Jackson, who is retiring. Recently, looking ahead to next year, Terry White, who accepted last year, as a replacement for Tony Baffa. We spent a day with Mr. Baffa, job shadowing with him, and getting used to the middle school. And I know he's very excited and looking forward to coming to the middle school and working with them. All of the students in instrument lessons. Tonight, later on, he will be um, acting on two resignations from the middle school. And I just wanted to mention these teachers briefly because they've only been with us for a year and had circumstances were a different from for them for their families. Um, I would be asking you to act upon offering them a second year probationary contract. Pam Mahoney, who has worked with us this year as a Spanish teacher, has been an excellent addition to our world language team. She has worked very well with seventh graders in Spanish, and she has a very firm, consistent, and gentle manner with the students. And for a first year teacher, she's one of the finest people I've seen manage a classroom with so little teaching experience under her belt. She's done an outstanding job. She is relocating with her husband, who is looking for employment in Massachusetts. So we will miss being working with her. Stephen Walliger has worked with us this year as a part-time music teacher. He has received an opportunity. And I, yeah, I just can't imagine why the Cape Middle School didn't match up with this one. But he has been offered a position of working with the um, choral and music department at Catholic University in Washington, D.C. And he has decided to explore that as a career with his family, and we wish him well, we wish both of them well, and we will miss them, um, but glad that they spent this year with us. And then, um, finally, to say goodbye to Charlie, I mean, that would be entire middle school. Um, Charlie, you've been on the board for nine years, and this is my ninth year as an administrator, so we started in these jobs a little bit together, and we have come a long way over many issues. Um, physically, uh, with the plant issues, my first year um, as principal, we had to call school off the first day because the roof was literally going to fall in. And we are here today where we don't have to worry about the roof falling in on us. We can set our sights on going as high as we want to, but we know that the building is safe. So we sincerely thank you for all of those efforts. I do very clearly remember, Charlie, the only time that I have seen you publicly throw a tent for Um Well, I don't throw a tent um, you did get our attention, Charlie, because it's something you did very rarely, and um, it kind of caught us by surprise, but I remember saying, this is really serious, because he, that's not the way Charlie usually acts to our us. And that helped um, certainly move us forward in our technology development, so we um, thank you for that um, jolt we needed it at that time, and I think we are in a better place today because of it. However, I think mostly we'll remember you for it. We'll remember you as a person who devoted many hours to the board, um, a person who was very fair, very respectful of us, and very consistent in putting the needs of all of the students in Cape Elizabeth first and foremost. And we are pleased, and we know that it's our pleasure to work in a community that elects people such as yourself to represent them publicly and to put forward the best needs. So, we thank you for all of your time, and we hope you enjoy any free time today in the future. Thank you, Charlie. <clears throat> thank you. Any questions of Nancy? Uh, just a quick one. Uh, I want to congratulate you and uh, the middle school in general on the Nelms Middle School Review. I know there's still a lot of work to be done, but uh, it's, it's great to have an outside group come in and see how good our middle school is. Since, since you alluded to your senior status, I was going to say, as a senior member of the board, to the senior member of the administrative staff, that was how I was going to kind of thank you, but you alluded that we actually, 
I actually started a year before you because I did work with Chris Toy that first year. Yes, the first year I worked with you, I was the assistant. But like you said, we came on about the same time in a very troublesome time and a reorganization. And, and, and I've appreciated over the years uh, the interaction I've had with you. I appreciate the amount of time I've spent in, I think I've negotiated all your contracts other than the initial one when you reorganized and you reorganized that first year I was on the board or organized that year. And ever since I've, I've bargained, you have been the chief negotiator it's, and I've bargained with you with everyone and I've appreciated that. I've appreciated your accessibility to me anytime I've called and getting back to me in a timely fashion. And I also thank your departed assistant principal. As I said uh, um, before when we accepted his resignation, when I, when I was elected the day after, he was one of the first people that I talked to and, uh, in your school. And he was kind of the dean. And he was the one that could give you a, a quick assessment of, of, of a historical perspective. And, and I appreciate that. So I thank you. Humorous letters, and we have all written back several humorous letters as well. I'm sure inspired him to bring this as he continues his career. But I know if he were here, he would want to thank you for your work for the Gable Smith School System to Charlie. So thanks. And in retrospect, you really aren't the senior member, administrative member. It's Keith with with me. Keith Weatherby. Thank you. See, I know. <laughs> 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 he thanked you for being your mind. <laughs> And actually, that was going to be my lead into thanking Keith for we've sat many times in, in the nine years across the table in uh, interviewing situations and, and fielding some, some problems and working through those problems. And I really appreciate the, the one other year that I was board member and we had to sit through a very sticky issue. And I think we resolved it. And I, and I, and I thank all the administrators and all the staff for coming, coming, to a, coming to a problem to work out a solution. We've had, we've had our ups and downs, but mostly they've been positive. I thank you. Uh, we now move on to committee reports. And the first will be the Finance Subcommittee and Keith Witherell. Thank you. Uh, we met earlier this evening at 6.30. Uh, we signed the warrants. We discussed a van lease for community services. and. Uh, I don't know if that requires our approval. It does not. Okay. Uh, community Services is essentially selling one of their vans over to our maintenance department and then are going to uh, uh, lease a. Is it, is it a new vehicle? Yeah. Okay. Uh, we, we discussed central office salaries. Uh, we reviewed their appropriations report and we talked about the upcoming. Uh, Construction or renovation, finishing off the 1930s building. Uh, in our in our recent uh, budget work, uh, we've we've approved and uh, are getting started on a renovation of the third floor of the 1930s building for three more classrooms, as well as the basement of the 1930s building, which will house all aspects of community services once that's finished. And we're looking forward to getting that started. I also would like to thank Keith this year for stepping up and being chairman of the Finance Subcommittee. I want to thank him for his stewardship and leadership in the budget process. And though I missed your presentation to the Town Council, I think it was very effective. And you proved me wrong in that we would have to come back. And I thank you for all the board for selling it, and particularly you for leading that charge. Well, thanks, thanks Charlie. I had a really good teacher for three years before <laughs> that. Thanks. I appreciate it. Uh, next will be the Policy Subcommittee and George Entwistle. The Policy Subcommittee met on April 15th. It was a, uh, a rather straightforward meeting. One of the issues that we discussed was fundraising, particularly as it, um, it pertains to uh, fundraising by booster groups. And uh, we did have um, Charlie Haskell, who is uh, at least the informal uh, spokesperson for um, the collection of booster groups attend. Uh, it was a productive discussion, um, but we decided that it was really uh, sort of a, a smaller group that needed to uh, sit down and, and draft some guidelines. 
uh, Pete Dawson uh, agreed to chair that. And as soon as they've had an opportunity to uh, pull those guidelines together, uh, we'll uh, be taking a look at those. Um, as well, we also uh, discussed the administrative process for student placement at the high school. Uh, uh, Pete uh, gave a great overview for us so that we all had a better understand understanding of that. Um, as it pertains to placement uh, for the honors and advanced uh, study uh, at the high school. And uh, there's no further action to be taken. That's actually an internal uh, procedure by the high school. Um, tomorrow, we will be meeting uh, at 7.45 a.m. in the council chamber's conference room, uh, specifically to uh, get an update uh, on the policy manual revisions um, that have been ongoing. And George, I also would like to thank you for being our chair of the policy subcommittee. Um, I thank you for your, your steadfast leadership, um, your um, sage advice, and um, you bailed me out of many compromising situations this year, and I thank you for that. Thank you. It was a pleasure. We now move on to unfinished business, and the first is... Oh, I'm sorry. Um, you have another report, John. I, I do. Um, <laughs> And uh, I think it's important, uh, this is a report from a committee that has been ongoing uh, for the last several months. It was, um, it somehow erroneously got tagged with the name of Time Study Committee. Um, and it's really not at all a, a time study, uh, but more a dialogue that's been, that's been going on. Um, the whole issue of time uh, within schools, public schools, has been getting much attention. Uh, recently, as, as recent as yesterday on NPR, I, I um, uh, heard again uh, some more discussion about this as a national topic, uh, really taking a look at the amount of time that's allocated to academic pursuits within public schools. And certainly, uh, this town has been no exception as we struggle uh, with some of those same issues. I really wanted to report on some efforts made by um, a very energetic group of uh, parent representatives, teacher representatives, um, administrative uh, representatives, and, uh, and Beth and I have uh, been part of that group along with the superintendent. Um, we've had meetings uh, January 21st, uh, February 12th, March 11th, uh, April 29th, and we have another meeting coming up May 26th. You say, well, what could possibly keep this group going? Um, and I think that it really is a, a very um, energizing uh, topic where we've really uh, explored and, and, and tried to challenge our own ideas or mental models about school time and how school time should be used. Um, we've also had a chance to study fairly extensively um, what other schools have tried and succeeded with um, throughout the, the nation um, as they have uh, attempted some innovative approaches uh, to using time more effectively. And, and that has been, uh, I think, what has energized us. It's a fa fairly creative um, group. And uh, as we hear more, uh, we have wanted to dig in more and see what we might do here. Uh, we've also had the opportunity to share ideas about how to infuse energy into the schools by way of supporting ongoing teacher education and development. And as we talk about the calendar uh, this evening, I, I, uh, people will hear um, that that is uh, more than just rhetoric. I think it's a commitment in terms of, uh, of teacher and staff development. Um, the follow-up has really focused on creating some local action plans uh, at each of the schools. And more recently, we've uh, heard some very encouraging um, reports back from each of the schools as the teachers and staff um, feel more empowered to uh, step out of the box and really look at and explore um, not ways to expand the school year but to use the, the time that we have right now um, and look at some innovative ways to uh, use both student and teacher time. Um, again, the uh, next meeting for that group is May 26th, and I would hope to present another report uh, sometime in the future. Thank you, George. Um, we now move on to unfinished business, and first is the policy, second reading. George? This is your evening. It is. <laughs> I feel like a star tonight. Um, what is being presented this evening uh, for 
a second reading uh, is a revision of the Section 504 um, policy, uh, which has to do with the Rehabilitation <coughs> Act of 1973. Um, it is actually a um, it is actually a fairly boilerplate policy. Uh, we had gotten some uh, feedback that we did need some uh, small revisions, which really didn't change the, the substantive part of the policy. Uh, it, is, it was presented last go around for a first reading, and uh, this evening is, um, is being brought up for a second reading and, and uh, uh, with hopes of moving to an approval to be adopted. And with that, <laughs> I would make a motion uh, that we accept the revised uh, policy um, file ACC, Section 504 of the Rehabilitation Act of, of 1973. Second. Any discussion? All those in favor? 7-0. Since we just approved the last policy that, that I will act upon as a board member, I, I really have to thank both Ann Chapman, Beth Currier, um, Gail Dransfield, and George Entwistle. The, our policy manual is probably in the best shape of probably a lot in this state. And I can tell you nine years ago, it didn't even resemble a recognizable policy manual. It was very hard to, to find something and then find an administrative procedure that went with it. And thanks to the, the efforts of the Maine School Management Association who initially put us together in a in somewhat re uh, recognizable policy manual and the work that was done both by, by Beth, by Ann, by Gail, and under George's leadership, I think we really have a commendable and um, functional policy manual, and I thank you. And I've been a superintendent in two states, and this is the best, the policy manual that's in the best shape of any that I've seen, so I would reiterate what you're saying. With some, uh, big, with some big improvements uh, actually uh, upcoming. Yes. George? I mean, John. Uh, reference to ACC-R, are we voting on that as a separate item? Grievance procedure. For it's, it's the administrative guidelines for the the, the comes all under the one. Because there was no date or anything on the back page of saying when it was adopted. I think we might want to take a vote on it because it's a new one. It, we're not just revising one that was there. All right. The one that we voted on was revised, right? This one is. This is actually new. Uh, new. Yeah. yeah. We totally can make a motion. What's that? A motion yeah. on. The ACCR administrative guideline. Right. Um, that the board accept uh, ACC as well as ACCR, the administrative guidelines which accompany the policy. Um. <coughs> Second. Okay, all those in favor? Thank you, John. And next, under unfinished business, is consideration of the proposed 98-99 school calendar. This is our second reading. This is our second reading. <coughs> we did go back and looked at the school calendar again, still keeping in mind two important goals, one of which was to provide a calendar that had fewer interruptions in stu into student time and a calendar which would give us back the full five days for teacher workshop days. So with that in mind, we made some changes. We bumped ahead the start of school so that now in the new calendar, the first pupil day will be September 2nd, and that, that's a Wednesday, and that will be preceded by two teacher workshop days, Monday the 31st of August and Tuesday the 1st of September. And the reason for that change was particularly from the Pond Cove teachers who felt that a five-day week was a very long week for the first week of school. <clears throat> pardon me, of school. So this gives us a three-day week for the first week and a four-day week for the second week because Labor Day is in the second week. So that was the first change. And then looking at parent-teacher conferences, we will still have parent-teacher conferences in October and in March. Uh, the new philosophy being that the parent-teacher conferences will be for all parents, both in the fall and in the spring. For K-8, the parent-teacher conferences will be accomplished via an early release day on October 22nd 
and then the remainder of the conferences will be scheduled at a mutually convenient time with the parents and the teachers in K-8 will receive a floating sub day or a floating day for them to choose to work with a sub. The high school chose not to do that. The high school will have an early release day on the 22nd and the 23rd will be a non-student day at the high school and that will be parent-teacher conference days. So on the 23rd of October, K-8 children will be back in school and the high school will be out. Then in March, the parent-teacher conference days will be uh, on the 26th will be an early release day and then there will be a sub day provided for uh, either work teacher workshop time or at, at the discretion of the teacher basically. Thanksgiving week, we have a major change. There will be no student days during Thanksgiving week. The 23rd and the 24th will be, which is the Monday and Tuesday, will be teacher workshop days, and the remainder of the week will be vacation. We bumped ahead the start of holiday, December holidays. The students will be in on the 21st and 22nd, and vacation will start on the 23rd, which is the Wednesday. And we're looking at this without any snow days, which we don't expect will happen. The last day of school will be the 11th of June, which is a Friday. If we had our full five days of snow, which we, which we uh, accommodate, the 18th would be the last day. The 11th will be graduation, high school graduation, with or without snow days. The last day of school, whenever that would occur, will be the last day after the last student day for K-8 will be a teacher workshop day, but the high school will be in session for one day longer because they had the day off in October for parent-teacher conferences. And we realize that this is probably the most convoluted calendar uh, that we've proposed, but hopefully when people see it on paper, it won't be quite so confusing. And those are basically the changes that have occurred since we had the first reading of the calendar. Cynthia, I just wanted to comment that it's probably not, a, not the calendar any particular group would have come up with. It really represents a lot of compromises. Um, lots of hours spent trying to come to some compromises, and we'll just keep looking at it and see how this one does and, you know, and keep making changes. But we're sort of just pushing little, little pebbles around as you try to find days and change what days are. And um, I guess my hope for the system is sometime in the future we get out of that box because it says, it just feels like you're pushing pebbles in half days and try to really, really change the way we, we look at, at time that we spend with kids and for professional development. Um, and I hope that would happen somehow, but right now we are just pushing little pebbles around and it's a lot of compromises that, that went into this. Sure. Just to uh, echo uh, Beth's sentiments, I, I, I concur. Um, we had had gone back, and it's amazing how, through um, reflection and collaboration, uh, we can set very sp specific criteria and actually meet the goals that we need to, and and um, and, and have everyone walk away um, uh, feeling like we've accomplished something positive. It is just making small adjustments, um, but we have uh, kept intact the uh, teacher development day, uh, which we could have potentially lost, and we've also um, created more spans of continuous learning time for the student. Um, so with those two goals in mind and sort of an open, an open mind on the part of those people that participated in this um, uh, calendar creation, uh, we did walk away with something that we feel is a good product. I thank the committee for going back and looking at the calendar um, with the suggestions from the board. And I, don't, I believe it's not uncommon, I've heard it from other school systems, that that week of November is actually used for a teacher workshop to, to give it a, day, a week long. Day, week I, long. We did know that Scarborough had tried it and they abandoned it and then I don't know if they came back to it. So we'll just see how the feedback is and how it goes and, and what happens. The one issue we didn't quite finish resolving was the request to have the last day of school, whenever it is snow day or not, a half day, um, sorry, early release. Early release. Um, and we talked a little bit about it before this meeting and I don't know if the will of the board was that that last day, if it truly is the last day, that it, an early release is possible, 
but that there would be no beach trips or things happening any time before that school would go on full, full force, full academic to the day through the day before the last day, if that was to be a half day. Um, and I don't know if I'm representing that correctly. I think that you are. It was, it was the feeling, again, trying to maximize the learning time that if we agreed to an early release on the last day, that end of school sort of celebration, recognition, those kinds of things would, would happen during that time and not creep up and start happening two or three days before the end of, of school. So I, I, think, I, mean, I think that's a fair representation. And I, I remember that uh, Mr. Weatherby had a question about graduation. But it's all right there, right, Keith? It's a week later than we had talked about before. I think we had talked about the fourth before. Okay. Mm -hmm. Any other comments or questions? I, I support this calendar. I'm really glad to see the reduction in the number of early release days. I think we were at seven last month, and now we're down to uh, three. Great. Three. And I think we all received a letter from our ex-school board member. <laughs> It's about the first communication we've had from her since she left the board and Chapman. So. Okay, do we have a motion? I'd move that we accept the calendar as presented. Do we have a second? second? Marie? Any discussion? All those in favor? 7 0. And before we move on to new business, I still have a little old business to do. And I, have to, I really have to thank Sue Weatherby um, for her years of service to us. It's been a fruitful nine years of working with her on many projects. Um, I've been fortunate to, to go through a number of reorganizations in this system over the last nine years, uh, both in reorganization of, of transportation, reorganization of scheduling of our buildings, reorganization of the custodial duties, and it's with Sue's leadership that we have accomplished that and we have a essentially smooth running organization. I also want to thank her as kind of our building manager during the building renovation project. She did this on top of all these other hats that she carried and she did it very effectively. Again, I thank her and hopefully sometime in the future I will be working with her again. <laughs> thank you. And also would like to thank Pauline on her first year of coming in and helping us through our first budget year and uh, her first budget year uh, successfully going through that process. And I thank you. And to Claire and her second year here, I thank you. I think you, again, reorganized our special education for the better of our students, for the better of our staff. And I thank you. Okay, we will now move on to new business. Right. Uh, first category of teachers, are teachers scheduled to go on to continuing contract for the 1998-99 school year? And we have three at the middle school. Cynthia Curry, who is a seventh and eighth grade science teacher. Joanne Lee, who is a music chorus teacher. And Kathleen Walsh, who is a grade five teacher. And at the high school, we also have three. Hannah Jones, who is an English teacher. Nancy Murphy, who is an English teacher. And Douglas Worth. I'm sorry, Nancy Murphy, who is an English teacher, and Douglas Worthley, who is a physical science teacher. Do you have a motion, John? I have a question. Maybe the superintendent could explain to the community how this process works to get to this point. Right. How, how you make this determination. Are you talking about the law in terms of the number of years, or? In reference to the probation, how you do it with evaluation, who meets with whom, who makes what decision, who makes what recommendation to you. First of all, teachers, have a two-year probationary period according to Maine law before they go on to what's called continuing contract. So these teachers have been with us two years and so then at that point if we so decide they go on to continuing contract. The second group of teachers tonight have been with us one year so they will remain probationary teachers for a second year and the determination as to who remains with us on a, to go on to a contract versus 
those who are not asked to return, basically is based on evaluations done at the building level by the principal primarily, also with feedback, feedback from assistant principals, department heads, and other people. But it's a very careful process. Uh, we feel this is the time that we need to decide which staff members represent the best match for this community, and also we really are interested in teachers who uh, we're not looking for average teachers, we're really looking for teachers who will enhance the quality of our overall teaching staff. So it really is a, uh, a test for them in terms of whether they are asked to continue on with us or not. So we spend a lot of time, and I sort of badger the principals on a regular basis in terms of the kind of data they're gathering and on the teachers, are they being in the classrooms frequently so they know what kind of participation they're getting. So it is a very careful process, and this, these particular six people have been with us two years, certainly have been viewed and observed both formally and informally on, a, on many occasions, and the determination has been that these six people should remain with us and to go on to continuing contract. Thank you. Okay. Do I have a motion? I'd make a motion that we accept the superintendent's uh, recommendation for teachers' schedule to go on to a continuing contract for the next school year, as okay. she's named in the middle school okay. and high school. Okay. We have a second. Second. John, any discussion? Just one question about uh, the part-time. I'm going to do that. Deal with that in a in a separate motion. Uh, but even if they've been part-time for the past two years, they still qualify yes. for yes. continuing contract. Yes. Yes. Okay. Yeah. According to the law, if they're part-time, they do. And also, if they're only with us part of the year, sort of if they're here at least one day more than half the year, that counts as a full year as well. So. Any other discussion? All those in favor? 7-0. The second group of teachers is a little bit larger. And these are people who have been with us one year and will go on to a second year as a, on a probationary status. At Pond Cove, we have Suzanne Hamilton in reading, Susan Michaud in grade two, and Marianne Nahan in special ed. We have one at the middle school, Christopher Turner in industrial technology and computer. And at the high school, we have Haven Jordan in social studies, Lynn Lockhart in Spanish, Roger Ryu in math. We have Ben Raymond and Kathy Van Dorn, who are both in special education, and Diane Brakeley, who is in technology, and she is a .6 employee. Do I have a motion? I move we accept the superintendent's recommendation for second year probationary teacher contracts. Do I have a second? Marie? Any discussion? All those in favor? 7 0. Thank you. Uh, moving on, we have one athletic fee position tonight. I'd like to nominate Colleen Kinsella as assistant middle school girls lacrosse coach. Do I have a motion? Move we accept the uh, nomination of uh, Colleen Kinsella as assistant uh, lacrosse coach. Second. Any discussion? All those in favor? 7-0. And Keith, she must be the last spring coach, right? <laughs> <laughs> it's gone on forever, right? I was assured that was the end of it. You were assured that was the last one, right? Um, D, I have four teachers that I wish to recommend to you move from part-time to full-time contracts. Cheryl Higgins at the middle school, who's been a .8 teacher to full-time. Hannah Ashley at the high school, who's been a .9 teacher to full-time. Joanne Lee, who has, is a middle school music teacher from .7 to full-time. And then Lockhart, who's a Spanish teacher at the high school from .8 to full-time. I have just a question. Will you want to do a motion first? No, you can do a question. As we put these from part-time to full-time, does it all add up to the same FTEs that I was just trying to yes. figure yes. out with Joanna Lee and then Yes, for the example, in Joanne Lee's case, Stephen Walliger resigned. We will not replace him. He was a part-time person. So, but the so that's was the match. he point Five at the middle school, and then she's going to, and she was 0.5 at the middle school, so that works one FTE. Or I mean, I'm just trying to figure out the. Actually, what Joanne is doing is she's going to remain her 0.5 position at the middle school. She'll take on the 0.5 position that Stephen Waller filled this year, and to fill what she has vacated is the 0.2 position at the high school. So that's the one. 
which is now vacant. And, and that would be the one that would be advertised and has built. Been, has been advertised, right, which we were uh, hoping for. And is that the same with the other ones that, um, if Hannah Ashley has been a point nine, she's taking over a, a, one, a full time spot, and then the point nine would be advertised? Is that how it's working? Well, sometimes there's internal. It's close to that, because I know we have a reduction. <laughs> <laughs> we have a, uh, a reduction in the number of positions that are in the uh, anticipated reduction of one tenth in the high school social studies department, so we actually will be advertising for a point eight, an eight tenths uh, history teacher in high school. Okay. But the bottom line is we, are not, we will not overspend the budget. <laughs> right. Okay. Right. Before we get on to the nominate, uh, a nomination, I mean a uh, motion, have you decided how you're going to handle your increased FTEs, or is that still? Or are you using them at all? <laughs> uh <-huh. laughs> um, okay, the, with, the, with the budget, uh, the board uh, agreed that I would have six tenths uh, to use um, as as necessary. Um, in the end, uh, I also was able to find uh, with the once the pre-registrations were done, um, we had an additional two tenths that uh, from one department that uh, there was going to be a reduction of two tenths in the technology department uh, because of uh, poor selections, and so we had eight tenths to try to see uh, whether we could meet uh, all of the needs. At this point, I've uh, decided on four of those tents. Uh, one tenth is, uh, I'm, I'm sorry, four tenths. Two tenths, uh, or one fifth of a, a teacher, is getting close so that I, I think I, I know where it's going to need to go. And one fifth we're trying to hold in abeyance to handle any uh, emergency situations in the fall where all of a sudden we, uh, you know, a class has gone over uh, what we'd like to have in there and we realize we need to split that class. So uh, two tenths uh, has gone to foreign language. The, the two that I'm sure of uh, is that we, we uh, did uh, need one fifth of a teacher uh, minimally at foreign language and a uh, decision was made to increase the English uh, staff by one fifth. We had a couple of classes there that were uh, 26, 27 students that we would have had just one section for if I didn't add a fifth. And so uh, uh, that uh, worked very well uh, for the projected enrollment of English classes. It really evened things out in terms of teacher loads and, and uh, class sizes. Uh, so those have been uh, definitely decided upon. Uh, it's looking like we may need one for math and uh, then we're waiting to see where the other uh, where the other fifth falls. So will you be able to use existing staff or are you going to have to go outside? Uh, depending on, depending on uh, which department. It, it, in, in most of the departments we do have a part-time person that could be increased. Uh, there are a couple of departments uh, now where we have, uh, for example, if we needed to add another fifth to the English department, right now we have uh, an even number of you know, full-time equivalents uh, with no part-time uh, projected. So that one we would have to go out and try to find somebody for a fifth if we had to add there. But in most of the other areas, we have a little bit of room to move. And uh, fortunately for us, sometimes unfortunately for the part-time teacher, the part-time teacher acts as that accordion to handle any uh, expansion you need in the Department of War or interaction. Thank you. Anyone else? Really, I would like to again though, add my thanks to the Board for approaching it in that way because it has uh, enabled us to make decisions that make sense uh, once we've seen the free registration rather than making them at budget time where we don't really know where we're going to need people. So they've worked very well for us and we've had a lot of comments to the Department heads and uh, I appreciate it. And remember, what you don't use, we take that. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yes. Uh, I, I appreciate that we have to give you the freedom for, for uh, your selections. I, I'm a little bit distressed about the high school chorus position in terms of, uh, I've got the sense that we supported during the budget process that it was going to actually be increased by a couple of tenths and continue the ball rolling. and. <laughs> because of registrations that hasn't 
or will not happen. And also now with uh, Ms. Lee going full time at the middle school, we're going to have to hire a two tenths music teacher. And I, I just I don't feel comfortable that that's a great solution. I you know I think that's going to be a problem finding somebody that's going to keep the chorus ball rolling at only a two tenths position. At least when we had Joanne, we had her as a almost a full time uh, employee with the school. I offer any help that I can give you in helping your search with that. <laughs> I can assure you that it's a major concern for me uh, also that uh, I think we can do it, but uh, at this point, <coughs> it's going to be active recruiting. And, uh, but it is a program that I definitely want to see uh, flourish and continue to grow. Thanks. And Pete, I'd just say, I think it is great that you have the flexibility to use the staff where you are, but also, you know, we're trusting you not to use it if, if you don't really need them, and um, I'm sure I'm sure you won't. <laughs> <laughs> Do I have a nomination? I mean, a uh, mo uh, motion. I make a motion that we increase uh, the. Um, is it Joanna Lee to full time? Hannah Ashley to full time, and what were the other? Lynn Lockhart. Lynn Lockhart to full time. And Cheryl Higgins. And Cheryl Higgins to full time. Do we have a second? Second. second. George? George. Any discussion? All those in favor? Seven zero. I apologize for, for diverting <laughs> the motion. Okay, we move on. I to, have one teacher okay. retirement. Uh, Martin Costello, retiring from the high school, and Marty has. 28 years of experience as a teacher and 24 of those years have been in Cape Elizabeth. And I recommend that you accept it with regret. Do we have a motion? I'll make a motion that we accept the resignation, or the, no, the retirement. Reti yeah, retirement, retirement of uh, Martin Costello with regret. Do we have a second? Second. <clears throat> um, again, I would like to thank Martin for his um, Marty is actually called for his years of service to our community and the education of our kids and wish him well in his retirement. All those in favor? 7-0. Now I have four resignations. Uh, I have two at the middle school as Nancy alluded to, Pam Mahoney and Stephen Wallacher and two at the high school, Chris Smith and Cliff Nelson. And they are all, no, Cliff is with us two years and the other three were with us just this year. Do you have a motion? I make the motion that we um, accept the resignations of uh, those teachers uh, presented by the superintendent. Do we have a second? Second. Any discussion? All those in favor? 7-0. And community services appointment? Right. Uh, I wish to uh, recommend to the board that Kathy Perkins be nominated to serve on the Community Services Advisory Board. There was a vacancy that occurred, and she has volunteered, and we're happy to have her. Do have I'll make a motion that we accept Kathy Perkins um, to the Community Service Advisory Board. And I would like to second that. I'm <laughs> going to go out of procedure and second that. And I would like to thank Kathy for an interesting year. I think it's been an education for all of us, both from her perspective and from the board, and I appreciate her efforts, and I'm glad that she's going to serve on one of our town committees, and glad it's community services, so I thank her. We're going to save a spot for you, Charlie. <laughs> <laughs> okay, all those in favor? 7-0. Okay, dates to remember. Um, School Board Policy Subcommittee will meet tomorrow morning, uh, May 13th at 7.45 a.m. in the William E. Jordan Conference Room, which is the conference room behind us. That was named after Billy Jordan last night by the Town Council. Uh, the next Policy Subcommittee after that will be June 10th at 7.45 a.m. in the William Jordan Conference Room. Um, finance subcommittee meeting will be Tuesday, June 9th at 6.30 in the William Jordan Conference Room, followed by the regular school board meeting at 7.30. And I hope that we have gone 
beyond the 5.30 um, meetings that go into 11 o'clock. So we've had two months in a row of that, and mm -hmm. I hope that's behind us. <laughs> hope it's behind you. <laughs> uh, there will be a school board workshop on Tuesday, May 26th at 7 p.m. in the high school library, and the topic will be administrative reorganization. Uh, uh, the June workshop meeting will be Tuesday, June 16th, 1998, um, it'll be two sessions, one at 4 to 6 p.m. in the high school library dealing with the learning results presentation by the staff. And they will reconvene from 7 to 9 for a review of school board goals and a discussion of full day kindergarten. Um, and I just, just for, particularly for Jennifer's benefit, Jennifer DeSena's benefit and also for Marie's, that the day before the next board meeting, the school board members, the new school board members are sworn in, and that's followed by a school board organization meeting, which we do in the, in the Jordan conference room. Okay, a consideration of the superintendent's recommendation to enter executive session for the purposes of discussing employee contract negotiations. So moved. So seconded. All those in favor, seven zero.